Uh, okay, um, I've got some Centurions to base, so I thought I'd go through um, a simple basing tutorial. Uh, this is kind of like the typical thing I'd go for if I wanted to base some Space Marines or something that's 40k. Uh, it could work. It could work in a fantasy setting. I I'm not too sure. I've I've not tried it, but um, yeah, basically I've got three bases to get sorted and I've gone and cut up some very thin um, cork um, some people use the thicker stuff uh, but then it tends to make your models higher um, <laughs> line of sight and all that you know if you're playing a game um, I'd use something bigger if I was doing a you know one of the larger models like a Dreadnought or something or if it was for a display purpose but for purely gaming I just keep it pretty flat so uh, yeah a couple of things that you'll need for the the building part of it is like I said some of this some uh, some cork uh, some fine sand uh, pick this up from Ikea uh, it's around about a pound pot pretty big pot. It's going to take a while to get through. Um, I've got some old coarse GW sand there. Um, but it's something you can pick up from your local builders, merchants or something. I mean you get massive bags, relatively cheap. I've got the sterling mud and a granite earth to add some extra details and give a little bit of something to it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start randomly gluing on parts of this uh, cork, cork stuff as this is going to make up the majority of the uh, of the base put a bit of super glue on it and place it onto the board I got this off um, off a notice board. If you wanted to know where I got it from, and it has little frayed edges of paper on it. Now, I like the little frayed edges of paper. It kind of gives the impression of roots or something just below the dirt. That's my excuse anyway. So I'm just gonna just gonna build these up. Add some layers this will help give us some depth later and we can put some stone in there can have them overhanging um, they don't need to be they don't all need to be flat or anything like you know sort of it's, it is increasing the, the base space I guess but I like the the textured effect that you can get with it it's real simple bit of super glue smash it on overlap them uh, I like to use the small bits as well. Get those in there. Apologies. Okay, so here we go. That's my chalk part sorting out. And hopefully. Guys should just stand on them pretty neatly. Might need to add another piece on there. It's always worth checking to see if your model actually fits on the base before you go ahead and commit putting paint and stuff on there. It's, uh, it's happened to me before where I've, I've spent ages putting some detail into a base, gone to 
put the miniature on it and yeah one of the feet is sticking up in the air and you know there's not a good solid not a good solid contact with it there's some of these little overhangs I'm just gonna cut back a bit get rid of those another reason why I like using this thin notice board cork is because I can get in there after I've glued it on and just tidy up any any places So now I'm going to come in there and I'm going to use some of the Agrelin Earth. And I need a relatively old brush for this. So, what have we got here? I think this is one of um, one of the base base coat brushes. From the Games Workshop range. And I'm gonna I'm gonna splodge this onto the areas where I've got black base still showing. Uh, this paint when it dries it cracks and the thicker I think the thicker you put it on the, the bigger your cracks will be um, and obviously the thinner it's on the the smaller your little cracks will be um, so you can you can build up some nice effects with it so I want I want to keep my bigger cracks on the larger areas and I want it just slightly slightly cracking in the smaller areas give the edge of the base a wipe Repeat that stage on the other two bases. Covering up where I've got any black parts showing. These technical paints that uh, GW make have some some really good ones out there. You get some great detail onto your models. Um, and the basing ones I found really useful. Uh, it can be pricey, um, but definitely worth getting getting one and trying them out. Or just go in the store and see if they'll let you try it out. Uh, normally pretty good like that. Okay, so now I'm going to get the uh, the Sterling Mud. Which is another technical paint 
from uh, the Citadel range. And now I'm going to go back in there with these bases. And I want to get this all layered up. I'm using it around where I've got my my cork board is sticking up a little bit. Not using it on every panel, but. What I'll do is um, where I'm putting this is most likely where I'll be adding additional gravel, sand, and some static grass. But uh, yeah, when when both of these have dried off, they'll give a really nice effect. Relatively quick and and simple. Okay, there we have it. I mean, you could you could just let those dry and um, just use those. I mean, they'd be good enough um, to go with. I could go ahead now and, and paint those, but I just want to add in some additional details. So <clears throat> I'm going to get a bit of PVA glue. By where I've painted the sterling mud, I'm just going to drop some of this PVA in there. some of the GW sand there's a good mix of grit in here so some large some small and repeat that on all the bases
Now because my because my technical paints are still wet, I'm just sprinkling sprinkling it on um, because I don't want it getting in the paint, sticking to the paint too much. Now I'm going to repeat the process with the, the finer grit um, that I've got from Ikea. And this I'm just going to splodge random pieces of PVA over the flatter areas of the cork and then I'm just going to sprinkle it on and it's just to give additional detail and depth. Alright, so there you go, that's, that's everything sorted. Just leave them to dry. And uh, we'll get to the painting. Okay, um, so I've let these dry off, and uh, they're ready for us to start applying some paint to them. But what I'm going to do first is uh, I'm going to get my large dry brush, and I'm just going to I'm just going to brush over them. There's no paint on here or anything, but it's uh, as you can see. Stuff is dropping off where it hasn't, the glue hasn't bonded it. Um, so if I don't do this, I'll, I'll start painting, and then areas of unprimed, unprimed areas will pop up. And I can, you can fill them in with a, a splodge of paint here and there, but it's it's just saves saves a little annoyance later on. Okay, well, so all those bits are done. Um, we're going to go on to get them painted. So I'm going to prime them and I am going to use the surface primer from Vallejo. This is German Panzer Grey. And uh, I'm going to use my airbrush for this um, for speed. Uh, you can you can use spray can. Um, spray can paints, uh, you know, like the cow's black. Or school white. Or you can even apply it with a brush. But um, yeah, just for speed, I like to use my brush for it. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and prime these. I've added a little bit of thinness to the 
primer um, just to help it come, just to help it fly out of the airbrush a little bit a little bit easier. Um, does mean it comes out a bit thinner, so you have to go over a few areas a couple of times. leave those to dry and um, we can get prepared for the next phase. <clears throat> right then, quick blast with the hairdryer. Fantastic little tool. Helps speed things up. Um, these are all primed and ready to work on. So, um, first colour I'm going to throw in there is um is the base grey, uh, flower model air. So I always put a little bit of thinners into my my airbrush first. A couple of spots of paint. Good to go. I'm aiming this at the the areas I've got the chalk on. The the areas I've got the cork on. Did I say chalk or cork? Well, anyway, yeah, where I've got the cork, so that's where we're, where we're hitting this first colour. This will build us up a nice base for the dry brushing later. Okay, so that's that done. Now we move on to the next colour. The next colour I'm going to use is um, is Vallejo Model Air Rust. I use this a lot. Um, I use it as part of my weathering on the tanks and I also use it on my basin um, to give it that nice earthy tone it also kind of looks a little bit Martian But yes, it's one of my one of my favourite colours. I'm going to spray this um, over where we've got the the gravel and the dirt. Doesn't matter if it gets onto any of the grey areas that you've already painted. It all adds to the effect.
two passes on these just to help build up the colour. So obviously apply it again but in, in, in smaller amounts you get a nice bit of uh, gradual changes there. Okay, um, so now we're going to move on to the final, the final colour that I'm going to apply via the airbrush. Um, so for that, I'm going to use another model air colour. Um, this one is model air wood, um, and I'm just going to basically spot this over where we've where we've put the rust uh, tones. Again, a bit of thinness. I want this one. I want this tone to be a little bit thinner than than the other colours I put on there. Um, it's just a just a tint it. This can, if it's if it's too thick, it can come out a bit a bit strong. Can come on a bit strong. Okay, there you go, got that working. So again, sort of aiming for where we've had the, the rust before, so it's a little bit too thin, so I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more paint. Again, do a couple of passes. And that's it. That, that finishes all I do with the airbrush um, and the bases. So it's just it's just three quick and easy colours over, over the over some primer. And um, you know you could you could probably just dry brush um, a light, a light, you know, like Zandru dust or something over that, and it's, they're good to go. Okay, so the next stage uh, is the dry brushing, and. For this, you need to get yourself a fairly, fairly old brush. And we're going to go in on the greys first. So, the first one I'm going to use is Dawnstone. I'm just going to dry brush ice um, pretty much over the grey areas. So, all you need to do to dry brush, load some paint upon your brush, grab a piece of tissue, and 
rub a bit off and then just in a circular motion pick out the edges and just build up that, that colour makes the lighting pop in don't have too much paint on your brush but don't have too little you, you'll find you'll have to keep Popping in and out of the pot just to help build it up. It's an effect that works best when you build it up gradually. So not not sticking a load of paint on there, throwing it on. Otherwise, it will look too. It'll look too much. It'll just take take all the hard work that you've put in so far. We'll just take that away from you. circular motions keep it all steady this is a really simple easy effect as you can see it's already it's already made a difference to what we've done move on to my next dry colour, uh, dry brush in a colour. So I'm going to use Andrew Dust and we're going to put this over our rusty earthy tone. Again, just nice circular motions. Start off light, gauge how much paint's left in the brush. So another thing with the dry brushing is you can alter the level by just how hard you go in there. So keeping it soft over the, the softer details like this this cracked turf there. But then when you're getting in on the stones here you can go a little bit rougher. Pick up more of the detail.
Okay. So, to top all that off, I'm going to use one more colour to use as a dry brush. And it's a light grey. Unsure how to pronounce it. Um, yeah, they come up with some interesting names for the Citadel paints. Now this is just going over lightly. Probably need less paint on here now. We're just picking out mostly the edges. I've switched from a circular motion now to sort of like a dragging. Just so I can pick out the edges better. This will be our final highlight colour. It's just giving everything that sharp edge. If you feel you've overdone it in any areas, just give it a quick, quick rub over with your, with your finger. You might be lucky enough to catch it. And there we go, that concludes the highlights with the dry brush. Nice and simple effect. Gets good results pretty quick. But now we're gonna, gonna make things a little bit more interesting. We're gonna use a bit of static grass and we're gonna add on um, some, some powders as well to give the illusion of um, loose soil, earth, um, so I'm going to be using the citadel grass. <coughs> can be slightly pricey but comes in a good selection of shapes. And we're going to need some glue. I mean, they've got they've got adhesive um, backing on there, but I do find that adding a bit of glue on there to really make sure that it's stuck and get yourself a little prodding tool. And then yeah, just start selecting some random pieces of grass. Put in a bit of glue and then just think whereabouts you'd like to place it. So I'm going to put one there.
by having something to prod it with you can put it you can put it over where you've put gravel and push it in just uh, helps hide hide itself in there the grass sorted. It's a nice little effect. At the moment probably looks a bit too green but the weathering powders really help hide that. <coughs> so for this I'll use the Forge World powders. Use light earth, dark earth, and I'm also going to use a bit of orange rust. You need to find yourself. Bit of a beat up brush for this. You can be quite aggressive with it. So what I use is the um, an old medium dry brush. <coughs> First colour we're going to start off with is the dark earth. And we're literally just going to plop it on, stipple it in there, doesn't matter if it gets over the grass, it's a good idea if it does, helps blend it all in. As you can see, I'm just dropping it anywhere. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give these a quick, quick blast with some hairspray. Spray it from above, not too close because you can see the powder does the shift get closer as it gets damper that helps it lock in place um, while you're building on pure effect after that you'd stick, um, you'd stick a layer of purity seal over it to make sure that it's all locked in next I'm going to stick in the orange rust I'm going to use it sparingly though I'm just placing this where we've got the, the dark earth. I'm just placing this in there just to add a bit of depth. So 
So where the darkest concentrations of the dark earth that I've already put in is where I'll, I'll be placing this. Okay, um, so now I'm just going to go straight onto the light earth before I seal it in with some hairspray. This you can be a bit more liberal with. This is going to fill in all the rest of the spaces that we haven't put the rust. with this one if it gets squash it into the base okay and that's ready to seal with the hairspray again from above quite high up you don't want to if you spray too close it just blows all the all the pigments away. You don't want that. It also helps bring out your head, your edge highlights back out as well. I found brings it all together quite nice. Okay, so. <clears throat> I painted the room in uh, black paint and I've sprayed it with purity seal to bond everything in and there you go that's that's the base you can see it's quite it's quite gravelly quite earthy um, the purity seal has made some of the grass at the end go white so it looks dead Bit of a side effect that I wasn't looking for, but it's turned out quite well. Um, little tip with the purity seal is sometimes if the temperature's not right, uh, you can spray it and it'll send you miniature frosty. A way around that I've found is to spray something before I spray the miniature and see how that how that looks. If that goes frosty in about five minutes, then you know it's not cool to use. Um, Let's uh, stick one of these guys on the base, see how that looks. And there we go. It's a bit dark, you can't really see what's going on there, but... Looks pretty cool. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Um, if there's anything you want me to do a video on or any tips you want me to hand out, uh, just drop it in the comments, let me know. Um, subscribe, subscribe to the channel and share. Many thanks.